Welcome back to the Best PT Podcast. This is episode 3.15, talking about spinal cord injuries. Two different main types of spinal cord injury, complete and incomplete lesions. Complete injuries, there is no preservation of motor or sensation below the level of the lesion. Incomplete injuries have scattered preservation of motor and or sensation below the level of the lesion. There are five subtypes of incomplete spinal cord injuries. The first is anterior cord syndrome, usually caused by a cervical flexion injury with a loss of motor function as well as pain and temperature sensation below the level of the lesion. This is due to damage to the cortical spinal and spinal thalamic tracts. Brown C cord syndrome is usually caused by a stab wound or a gunshot wound, resulting in a hemisectioning of the spinal cord, paralysis, loss of vibration and position, position sense ipsilateral to the lesion, as well as a loss of pain and temperature contralateral to the lesion. This is very rare. Cauda equina syndrome is considered to be a peripheral nerve injury, resulting in flaccidity, areflexia, and an impairment of bowel and bladder function. Full recovery with cauda equina syndrome is not typical due to the long distance needed for axons to regenerate. Central cord syndrome is usually caused by cervical hyperextension injuries. The upper extremities are more affected than the lower extremities, and motor function is more affected than sensation due to damage to the spinal thalamic, cortical spinal tracts, as well as the dorsal column. Posterior cord syndrome is very rare, results in a compression of the posterior spinal artery. There is a loss of proprioception, two-point discrimination, and stereognosis. Motor function remains intact. The Asia Impairment Scale is used to grade spinal cord injuries. Asia A is a complete spinal cord lesion. There is no sensation or motor function at the levels of S4 or S5. Asia B is sensory incomplete. Sensation is preserved below the lesion as well as at the levels of S4 and S5. Asia C, motor incomplete. Motor function is preserved below the lesion, and most key muscles below the level of the lesion will be less than 3 out of 5 for manual muscle testing grades. Asia D, also motor incomplete. Motor function is preserved below the level of the lesion, but most key muscles will be greater than 3 out of 5 for manual muscle testing grades. And then Asia E, sensor, sensory and motor functions remain normal. Some common complications of spinal cord injuries. DVTs, deep vein thrombosis, result in lack of movement in the lower extremities. Remember that there is no active or passive motion of an involved lower extremity until after 24 hours of anticoagulant therapy. Ectopic bones or heterotopic ossification is a formation of bone within the soft tissue due to abnormal calcium metabolism. Pharmaceuticals can help inhibit ectopic bone formation, and there is some evidence that therapeutic ultrasound can break apart these calcifications. Orthostatic hypotension, defined as a decrease in systolic blood pressure greater than 20 millimeters of mercury after moving from supine to sitting. Due to a loss of sympathetic control of vasoconstriction alongside the absence of resting muscle tone in spinal cord patients. Pressure ulcers. We'll get a little bit deeper into pressure ulcers in the wound care episodes of the integumentary system, but just know that these are more common in spinal cord patients due to their inability to frequently change position independently. And finally, spasticity is a big problem with spinal cord patients, although some spasticity may be useful for patients to help with positioning and movement, such as found with the tenodesis grip. Functional outcome expectations. On pages 200 to 202 of the Score Builder Study Guide, there are tables from the Umfred book, Neurological Rehabilitation, that list outcome expectations for every level of spinal cord injury. I'll hit on a couple of the landmarks here. Ventilator-dependent patients are high tetraplegics, usually upper cervical. Gait training becomes possible with paraplegic patients at the level of T1 and below. Bed mobility, patients become independent at the levels of C7 and below. Transfers, patients can begin to be modified independent at C6 and below. For weight shifting, patients can be modified independent or independent at all levels with the appropriate assistive technology such as tilt in space power wheelchairs. For wheelchair management, patients are dependent at the levels of C1 through C8. 
Wheelchair mobility, patients become modified independent at C5 and below. For independent range of motion, feeding, grooming, and dressing, patients become modified independent at the level of C6 and below. For bathing, patients become modified independent at the level of C7 and below. For bowel and bladder care, patients become modified independent at the level of C7 and below. And finally, ending with a few terms unique to spinal cord injury. A myelotomy is the severing of spinal tracts to reduce spasticity. A neurectomy is the severing of a spinal nerve segment to reduce spasticity. A rhizotomy or a dorsal rhizotomy is a resection of sensory nerves to decrease spasticity and a tenotomy is a surgical tendon release to de decrease spasticity. Paradoxical breathing occurs in spinal cord injury patients where the abdomen rises and the chest pulls inwards during inspiration. Spinal shock occurs approximately 30 to 60 minutes after spinal cord trauma and can last several weeks. Symptoms include total flaccid paralysis, loss of all ref and loss of all reflexes below the level of the, re the lesion. And finally, two different types of bladder, neurogenic bladder. The bladder empties reflexively. This occurs in injuries above the level of S2. And a non-reflexive or flaccid bladder occurs with injuries below the level of S2. That's it for spinal cord injuries. This was episode 3.15. The next episode... 3.16 will talk about neurological rehabilitation theories and dogmas. As always, the outline will be in the show notes. Thank you for joining me.